Can I get the other panelists? Where's Marcus? Is Marcus around? Oh yeah, Marcus, if you could come up and join. So we're, we're going we're gonna to start the panel. These guys are just setting up. We're going to do a few slides. Um, well, at least Julian and, and Jason are going to do a few slides to kind of get the panel started. And like I said before, if you could hold your questions while they're presenting the slides. I know you'll have lots of questions because we want to save the questions till after the slides so that we can address it to the, the panelists. Who else are we missing? We've got Marcus. Bert's coming up, yes. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, perfect, okay. So this panel is going to be about licensing, open source licensing, in fact, actually. Yes, a good correction. Um, thank our panelists that are up here. I'll just briefly let you know on who they are. So uh, on the right, representing Squeak, we've got Bert next to him. So we've got the open source guys on the, uh, the kind of the Squeak distribution guys on the, on the right here. So we have Marcus representing Faro. In the middle, we've, uh, we've got an actual, uh, I, uh, what would you say, lawyer? I, IP lawyer. So we've got Henrietta here. So, and she's going to help us kind of keep everything under control and make sure we don't uh, say anything that we're not supposed to. <coughs> and then representing Seaside, we've got Julian. And then we have Jason representing um, sort of the corporate syncom side as well. So... Without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to, to Jason and Julian to kind of give us some slides so that we can kind of ground the conversation. So if I just pass that over. Okay, so we've got about 25 slides and we're going to try and do it in 20 minutes. So we're going to be very fast. But if you can't understand what we're saying, stop us. Um, otherwise, questions till the end. Right, so our objective here was really to encourage the small talk community to uh, build better uh, open source software projects and uh, an important part of that is getting the licensing issues right. Uh, it is a lot less painful if you get those issues right up front um, and don't let them come and bite you. Um, Julian and I would just like to make it absolutely clear we are not legal experts and uh, we may well have uh, failed to understand some of the subtleties of what we're saying but we're just trying to start the, uh, give some frame of reference for the conversation with the panel. Okay, so uh, why do we care? Next slide. Oh, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> Told you we'd so, it up. Uh, why does this whole thing matter? Often when we talk about this, people say, we'll deal with it when we come up, uh, when it comes up. But the problem is that by the time it comes up, if you've been infringing, you've been infringing from the point that you started using it. It doesn't just start when it's discovered that you're infringing. Um, and if you're distributing software, that is found to be infringing, your users are infringing. So it's not just you, right? Your people may be going after your users when they come after this. You can't just go back and erase all of that history. Um, and these issues are easier to resolve upfront when what you're distributing doesn't have much value, right? There's not, someone's not coming after you for some little thing that you've written with no value. Um, once you've gone years down the road and you want to sell it, well then, you know, someone's going to care. So these things are simpler to sort out upfront. Um, at this point, you also have choices. You can move on to something else. If it turns out you have a problem with some piece of software, you can easily move to something else. Um, and a good example, or a possible example, of someone sitting and coming in later is the Oracle Google thing. Um, it seems likely that Sun had these patents and Sun wasn't that interested in doing anything with them, but in part of the purchase agreement, um, you know, one of the things, one of the values that Sun had was that they had these patents that could be used against Google. So you may have someone, an individual, who, or a company that you think is, you know, they're good nature, they're not going to use it, but what if someone else buys them down the road? Um, and the penalties here can be financial, they can be professional, um, and they can even be criminal. Um, 
penalties for this. Um, also, it's all about copyright. So copyright is fundamental to open source. Um, the GPL only works because of copyright. The copyright is what allows you to exercise um, the, the right to restrict people's usage. Um, so if you don't understand the copyright, if you don't own the thing that you're licensing, you don't have any ability to say, well, you can only use it if, because that comes from the fact that you own it. Um, so this is all about understanding copyright so that you can make it your friend and use it for your benefit. Copyright in and of itself is not evil. Okay, so let's talk about some of the uh, legal concepts that we've got to cover. First, intellectual property. We're going to mention the two forms of intellectual property that protect software. The first one is copyright. Copyright, okay, copyright is about a creative work that has some level of originality in it. Uh, there is, uh, it's tangible, okay, it's not an abstract idea. It has a, uh, what you might term a chain of creativity. You create something and then it gets modified and changed or you create derivative works from it. And uh, really there are two aspects to copyright. The first is the moral uh, rights, which are generally, in most jurisdictions, not transferable. The moral right to be assigned to be an author and a few other uh, minor things generally. Um, and the more significant one is the economic rights to actually exploit commercially uh, that copyright. And uh, it's important to note now that you generally don't need to put a copyright statement on something to retain the copyright, okay? So if you see uh, something on a website that has no copyright statement, that doesn't mean that you can just go and lift it, okay? Uh, in most jurisdictions today, uh, that copyright is uh, retained by the copyright owner regardless of that, uh, you know, that C thing, okay? That, that C and... Uh, funny squiggly thing and, and all rights reserved is just for information purposes to help you identify who really owns the rights. But uh, it doesn't mean that that's lacking and you, you can go and do whatever you like with it. Uh, be very aware that it is very um, country specific. Uh, there are international treaties, European wide and worldwide, that have helped standardize it to some degree, but it is still country specific. Still me. Oh. Okay, uh, the second one is patents. Um, okay, so uh, this is quite exciting, of course, because uh, we have the Android situation where uh, Oracle is suing uh, Google, and the main line of attack here is uh, patents. Uh, it's pretty clear that for the last 10 years, they, uh, a large number of vendors have been building up large patent arsenals. You can think of it a, of a stage of Cold War, okay? Everyone has been arming like crazy, and um, in the last couple of years, um, that has been heating up, and uh, we expect it to get um, uh, more into open warfare over patents. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, what happens from a legal perspective, and I think that the Oracle... Um, Google thing is just the opening salvo of what could be quite a, uh, a bloody set of legal exchanges. Uh, okay, then I want to just talk quickly about GPL3, which has um, some protections in it for patent rights.